All right, so this is Horner again. We're still looking at the electrostatics notes for uh, being successful in the AP1 test. And we'll notice that uh, there's a couple of different types of things when we talk about electrostatics. There are conductors and insulators, and you already kind of know about these. Conductors are really good at uh, picking up charge, so gold, copper, silver, and aluminum. You do actually have gold and silver in your iPhone or in your cell phone. And then there's other things that are called insulators, and uh, good insulators would be like glass, plastic, and rubber. And these are things that do not conduct electricity very well. So they are usually characterized by their resistivity or ability to resist the movement of charge. Semiconductors, on the other hand, are materials which, when they're pure, are really good insulators. If I had a small amount of impurities, uh, we call these dopants so they're doped. Um, they have uh, resistivities that can be lowered until they really become really good conductors. So uh, semiconductors are like uh, your computer chips, those type of things. There's a really easy way to see what kind of charge something has or if it has charge or not, and it's called an electroscope. And the electroscope basically is a metal rod that goes through a rubber stopper, and then it goes down and it's got gold foil down on the bottom. Remember we said gold was a really good conductor. And so we can transfer charge from one thing onto this ball, it travels down, and then it uh, attaches to the gold leaves. And when it does that, we know that like charges repel, so like charges will repel, and therefore these two little leaves will come apart. Like charges, so if I have two positive charges, they actually force each other apart from each other. Uh, two negative charges would do the same thing. They would also force each other apart. But if I have a positive and a negative charge, they will absolutely pull towards each other. So we say that they are attracted to each other. Let's take a look at an example electroscope. An electroscope looks like uh, this is a little simulation. Here's our electroscope and we have a charge rod above it. There's no charges anywhere here, excess charge on this object called the electroscope. And what we're going to do is we're going to charge it. So there are two gold leaves sitting down on the bottom. So to charge it we're going to hit the charge button and you'll notice they touch the negative rod and when they do that negative charges then are transferred from the ball down to the gold leaves and when it's charged you'll notice the two gold leaves basically moved apart from each other so I'm going to reset it I'm going to charge them again and you'll notice that when I put those negative charges on the electroscope the two gold leaves come apart if I was to touch the electroscope with my finger I'd get rid of those extra negative charges and those two gold leaves then would slowly come back together. So I'm going to reset it. I'm going to add some more charges here. I'm going to charge it with more charge and you'll notice it quickly moves apart and goes apart a lot, a lot further and then it takes a little bit longer for it to neutralize as it goes through. So that is a good example of an electroscope and how they work. For number seven, it says separation of the leaves in an electroscope when an object is touched to could indicate, well, we know that the object would not be neutral. We know that that object would definitely not be neutral because neutral charges would not produce, um, would not produce those two things having to come apart. Uh, so instead of being neutral, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the other ways that they're charged. So uh, neutral would not work, okay? The object is negatively charged. Yes, you can take a negative rod, attach it, and then you'll end up with negative charges down on the bottom. So this one would be correct. The object could also be positively charged. If you take a positive rod and place it next to an electroscope, all the negative charges then will move into that rod. And when they do that, that leaves the object that's left positively charged. We know that insulator would not be good because it would not conduct any charge at all. So our answers for number seven would be both B and C. Uh, in the next video, we will tackle Coulomb's Law.